Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Healthcare Entrepreneur Academy podcast. I'm your host, Jason Duprat, and we are back here for another Tactical Tuesday episode. On this episode, we are gonna talk a little bit about the product life cycle and what this means for your business. Now, this could be a product, it could be a service, it could actually be a, an entire business, but for the purpose of this episode, we're gonna be talking about products within your business. So I'm gonna tell you how we're using something called the BCG matrix. It is a diagram. It was created by the Boston Consulting Group uh, a couple decades ago, but it really helps to put things into perspective and, and put like a visual way to learn exactly the process that big companies go through when they have, you know, multiple products, multiple divisions and those sorts of things. And they're trying to work towards, uh, you know, creating the next product line, the next service line. And it just provides some really good insight into how that whole process works. And this is something that's totally applicable to small business owners, clinic owners. Um, really, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you have a business, this is definitely applicable to you. So I'm going to share my screen here. And what I'm going to be sharing is it's the BCG matrix, also called the growth share matrix. Well, that's probably the most common name for it. Uh, so what we're going to do here is, is look at what this matrix is. So let's just kind of do a quick walkthrough on the matrix, what in the world it means. And um, we're going to be using this to help us figure out how to develop a portfolio of products or services, or in some cases, if you're a huge business, you know, a huge holding company, a portfolio of other companies, uh, subsidiary companies. So for our case, we're going to be looking at, you know, how do we, how do we work through this matrix to think through the process of creating or adding additional products or services to your business. So we're going to look at the, basically the Y axis here, and we're going to be looking at the X axis here. And so this is basically a four quadrant graph. So you'll notice here that the X axis represents cash generation and the Y axis represents cash usage. Now we're going to be talking about each individual product and how this matrix applies to cash usage or cash generation. It's sort of that determines how it falls on the plot. So you can see here that if the cash usage is low, so I'm going to actually erase these arrows because um, it actually kind of moves in the opposite direction. If cash usage is low down here, this is the cash cow, right? So this, if you have a product or service that has low cash usage and generates high cash flow, this is called a cash cow. So cash cows are basically the golden gooses of businesses. Everybody wants a cash cow. The cash cow is what your business leverages to produce the income necessary to develop or add or create or build additional products or services. And so one of the things that we teach in our training program is that you want to really just start with one or two products or services and really get good at those. If you get really good at those one or two products or services, you're going to, at some point, um, if you have a good one, you're going to have and develop a cash cow. Now your cash cow can start to fund other parts of your business, um, other products or services. So for example, if you're a clinic owner, maybe you get really good at doing Botox and fillers and you get so good at doing Botox and fillers that you, you know, hire multiple um, RNs or other clinicians. They're doing the Botox or fillers for you. Your clinic's full. You, you now have a cash cow service, right? Um, you know, you've been doing this for years. Your clinic's completely full and you've got um, a, a bunch of staff helping you deliver the product or service at a high quality. And now you've got this cash cow and it's pumping out a large amount of cash and it's not using very much cash. So the thing to think through as a business owner is, you know, what are, what are your goals? First of all, do you have the goals to continue growing your business to the next level? Do you want to add more products or services? You're, you're going to, at some point, have to create another revenue stream. And if you want to create more revenue, if you want to keep growing, you're going to have to leverage the revenue and reinvest the revenue from your cash cow in order to start a new service line or a new product or whatever it is. And so say for, for example, we're talking Botox here, your Botox is crushing it. It's now a cash cow. It's spitting out a lot of extra revenue and 
you're the type of clinic owner who wants to keep growing. You want to you want to expand your practice. You want to um, keep taking things to the next level. For some of you, you may not want to do that. That's totally fine. Um, you would just sort of sit there and hold on to your cash cow. The, the problem with cash cows is that eventually the product can die. It can get stale. The delivery can get stale. New competition can come in. And so what most businesses will do is they'll take the revenue from the cash cow and start to invest in the next, the next product line or the next service line that is, uh, you know, trending or has a whole lot of potential or where there's not a lot of competition, those sorts of things, because business in business, absolutely nothing is guaranteed, right? So you don't want to just sit on to sit on a cash cow forever. And then simultaneously expect that cash cow to never die because there is a fairly good probability that it will die at some point. Um, you know, you really can't predict exactly when, but it's probably going to, over time, start to uh, produce less cash flow. So what most businesses will do is they'll start to invest that money. So we're gonna be taking our money from our cash cow and we're going to be putting it over here in the, in the top right quadrant. So we're gonna start moving investment money here. So for example, maybe you're a practice and you want to add in a different service. Maybe you want to add in IV hydration therapy and, or IV nutritional therapy. And you're going to start to invest in a training program into developing new consents into self-education. And then, you know, as things progress, you might invest into just training staff to, to execute this particular service for you. And so while you're doing your initial investment, you're moving up here into the top right quadrant, which is the question mark, right? So the question mark represents um, a product or service that has low cash generation and it's consuming a high amount of cash um, because you're investing in this particular product or service to build it up, to do the marketing, to develop the reputation, to train the staff, to do everything necessary to add a new product or service. Um, that's just part of the game. You're always gonna have something Basically, pretty much everything starts as a question mark at some point. Um, it can quickly move over from a question mark. It can quickly move over to a star or it can quickly turn into a dog. If you're very experienced and, and you, you've kind of done this multiple times, most of your question marks will start to turn into stars. Now, stars are um, representative of things that generate high cash flow. They also take a good amount of cash to to continuously operate and to continuously run, but because they produce high cash flow and you have a really high potential for a large market share, the market's really big, there's a really large TAM, total addressable market, the stars have a ton of potential. And this is kind of where you see like a lot of the software um, opportunities. This is, you know, like AI is huge right now. There's a, there's a huge opportunity in artificial intelligence and developing um, tools around that. Anything that's that's got just an expansive market. So I'll give some examples too of of what we're doing in our business. So right now for us, our our cash cow is our ketamine academy. That's our first product. Uh, it certainly started out as a question mark with you know low cash generation and high cash investment as we spent years building it up, improving it, hiring consultants to improve things, hiring attorneys to write templates, all these sorts of things. Um, so that was our, that was our cash cow, this cash cow. So we started with ketamine Academy and then this cash cow actually funded our question mark at the time. This was in uh, 2018 when we started the IV therapy Academy. Now the ketamine Academy has a fairly small, you know, total addressable market size. Um, you know, it's in comparison to other business opportunities or other uh, specialties, it's much more of a niche service, right? It's not like, it's not huge. It's not offered to every single hospital, um, which can be a pro and a con. It, it's definitely great because there's not a lot of competition, but in terms of scaling something to the moon, it doesn't have as much potential um, even from an education standpoint where we can educate across the entire US, just doesn't have the potential as something that's way more broad, something that can benefit large hundreds of millions of people. Um, it's just because it's such a niche product and training program. 
I knew that going into it, that this was very niche, um, but we got it to relatively profitable. We decided to, to fund our question mark, which was IV Therapy Academy. IV Therapy Academy is a much, has a much larger total addressable market. It, there's less barriers to entry. It's less niche. Potential IV Therapy Academy students and clinic owners can serve a large number of people. It's just not, it's not as niche it's, it's, and less barriers to entry. So, so that probably, you know, that kind of moved in, in here to sort of like the lower end of, of the star level, and, which is great. So what we're still funding through both of these, actually, we're uh, actually no Ketamine Academy is funding all of it. Ketamine Academy is funding another question mark. Um, we're leveraging our cash cow. We're funding another question mark here, which is our search engine optimization agency. So we are investing heavily into some software tools, into some trainings, into everything that we need to create a search engine optimization training, or I'm sorry, uh, agency. So that way we can serve our students to the next level. So we're always, all of our products and services are um, essentially going deeper with our current students. We're offering another tier of service. And soon over the course of years, our programs are gonna be so unbelievably good that there's gonna be zero, well, there's almost at that point now, there's just gonna be zero competitors that are even close to doing what we're doing because we're tackling every single problem that clinic owners face. And we know that um, search engine optimization, getting clinic websites ranked in the top three spots of Google locally is a challenge for most clinics. And so we wanna take that on with some ridiculous money back guarantees and things. And so that's what we're investing in. Well, one of the things that we're investing in right now.